Hello guys, welcome to another lighting uh, workshop. Um, this is actually the second video in my series of lighting workshops. Um, the first video is really just running through the kit, okay? So if you, I, I do recommend you watch that video because it goes through all the lighting accessories that you can use uh, when you're lighting with, with, with tungsten or continuous lighting, or indeed fluorescent lighting as well. Um, but this video is really to get you up and running, utilising um, either uh, the kit that's loaned out um, to our students at college, um, or you can, you can buy it cheaply on eBay really. Um, so um, I will leave that up to you, but the first video runs through that. This video is, is, is running through the, the, the actual physical technique of lighting. So um, just gonna, I will start off with um, some do's and do, don'ts regarding uh, how to light. Um, and uh, essentially we, we will run through um, the typical standard uh, broad lighting um, uh, in a sec. So uh, just quickly, um, all the lighting setups in the videos will be on a downloadable handout. Okay, so um, if you just have a quick look at those. Um, and um, um, obviously in the kits, when you've got a kit or you've got some lighting, um, obviously get it all out, get it all on stands or the lights and, um, and, and um, get ready to go. Um, just very, very quickly, camera settings make sure you are on 400 ASA or ISO, make sure you're on, uh, if it's digital, um, tungsten white balance, okay? So that will neutralize the orangey light into sort of pure uh, white um, lighting. Uh, also make sure you're on TV mode or S mode, um, dial up a 60th, that's a semi-automatic mode, um, and the camera will choose, hopefully, if you've got your lights on full, full blast, um, an aperture of f8, f5.6, which will be more, more, more than acceptable for, for a good portrait shot. Okay, make sure you're on autofocus um, as well. Okay, and don't go lower than a 60th uh, of a second because you'll get camera shake or you'll get image movement. Okay, just very quickly, this is, this is, some, this is some what not to do. Um, just, just to quickly say, this is our finished product. Uh, we'll be going back to this uh, in, in a couple of minutes, but um, I'm going to take the lights off the stand uh, and just show you what not to do. Okay, so when you get your lights out on stands, whatever you do, guys, um, regarding what, whatever light it is, this is a redhead with barn doors. Fully recommend these. Um, uh, 30 quid a light on eBay. This is what not to do with your light, okay? So um, um, I'm gonna put this light at the front, okay? Um, and I think the worst kind of lighting is flash off the camera. Uh, and this is essentially doing the same thing. It flattens out all the shadows, the, the, the would-be shadows that you would get if you would side or top light your model. Uh, and side lighting or top lighting is the proper way to do it. If you light it from the front like this, you get the shadow on the background. Um, if you don't diffuse the light, uh, you get obviously um, sort of like quite harsh shadows, okay? Now always bring your model forward of the background, so always light them independently. I've got my model a good sort of 10 feet off the background here, okay? So when I bring my light round to the side, which I'm doing now, side 45 degrees side to the top, um, slightly higher than the model's head, then uh, we get better, better shadows. Okay? Now, um, essentially, um, put in the barn doors so you don't get light flooding onto the background, onto the ceiling, and we've put it through a screen here. If you don't know what a screen is, look at the first video. Um, you can put a bit of tracing paper over the lights, okay? Okay, um, watch for all the health and safety in my first video. Obviously, this shouldn't go too near the light source and always hang it on the end of the barn doors, okay? With a crocodile clip. Use your shirt or pair of gloves if you're operating these hot barn doors. But here I've got this screen, and if you're serious about doing some portraitures, portraits, I will always make up a screen. You could use an old um, uh, frame from a picture or a mirror 
but essentially this is four bits bolted together and with a bit of tracing paper stuck on the top. Okay? Now I'm going to clip this onto my studio stand. These clips are, are brilliant if you've got a, a lighting studio stand, a few of these free. It's always good to have a few extra uh, not to put lights on because you'll, you'll clip other things onto them. Um, and I've got a clip here, it's a 175 Manfrotto clip, and uh, they're just, as I say, they're great for clipping, holding screens on here that we can put our light through. Okay, and this goes in front of the light. Never leave lights unattended. Guys, always tell people that you're doing a shoot in the, stu in the house or studio, whatever, so people don't rush in and knock lights over. And always, when, when you put these lights away, make sure they've been off for a good half an hour so they've cooled down. Okay, so there we go. One light at 45 degrees, and that creates a nice... This is what we call the key light, and this key light is doing the sort of the main lighting on the right-hand side of my model's face. Now, on the left-hand side, on a, on a stand, again, I've just got a crocodile clip here, but I've clipped a reflector. And the reflector, this is a professional reflector that you can buy, they, they, they crop down into smaller, handy size, uh, sort of uh, portable function, uh, functions. But basically, this, uh, you'll see these on our professional sets, but what they essentially do, reflectors or fills, they will add a little bit of light from the key light back in. So that's in and out. In and out. This has got a silvery side, which I was doing it with. I'm going to use the white matte side. If I bring this in and out, you can see the difference. The white matte side is much, much more flatter and diffused. Um, but essentially, guys, always use a bit of fill in your, in your lighting setups, because it's better to have a little bit of light in there and then darken it down later in, in, in a dark room or in Photoshop. The worst thing is, is lighting it like that and trying to bring up the other eye and you've got no light to, to lighten it up with and you will struggle. Okay? So essentially I'll clip that back on. But that is broad lighting. You can do it with or without background lights. I've got the background lines, lights on. Um, if you want to um, obviously utilise a, um, a background Look at my first video, I'll go through all the options there. Here we've got two lights at 45 degrees, okay, with barn doors on. They, they flag the light off from the model, so none of this light is going onto the model, apart from a bit of reflection from, from the bright white to the background. But essentially, guys, always light your model and your backdrop or your background separately. These two lights here, 45 degrees, Bang, straight onto the white background. Same if you wanted to use a colour, you just use two of 45 degrees. You can, you can knock one off as well to get a bit more milk, a bit more atmosphere. But that is your basic, uh, what we call broad lighting setup. Okay? Uh, I'm going to do lots more other videos, um, but uh, check out those. Uh, but essentially, um, good luck. Look forward to seeing the results.